Welcome viewers uh, once again to this uh, lecture on emotional intelligence. Uh, till now we have already discussed about the you know mixed model and the ability model of uh, Daniel Goleman and the Mayor Sullivan, uh, Mayor Sullivan Daniel Goleman. So, as uh, um, for the last conversation discussion uh, like uh, Daniel Goleman has reduced all, all these uh, domains important domains into four aspects that is self awareness, self management, social awareness and relationship management how we are going to uh, use emotion in case of ourselves in uh, regulating monitoring uh, our own behavior as well as how we can use it in understanding others emotions and influencing them and maintaining our relationship management. So, now Goldman suggests that EI is about controlling emotional reaction in oneself like for example, uh, so when we even though we are going through positive emotions, negative emotions very uh, often and uh, we are um, you know we are deeply influenced by it, uh, but we cannot uh, exactly we cannot instantly you know respond to react to a particular situation with the same intensity and the same degree. So, we need to control our emotional reactions in ourselves, because uh, it should be appropriate it should be contextual it should be desired um, uh, as per the requirement of social uh, situation. Hence, we need to uh, control our own uh, em emotional reactions and EI is uh, is all about this controlling emotional reactions uh, while using the reason to anticipate and control them in others. So, when we are trying to regulate and influence others, regulate uh, others emotions, understand their emotions and influence their behaviors and emotions. So, we have to justify it, we have to rationalize it. So, what would be the, um, what could be the proper reason for this, how I should do it, because here we have to blend, we have to um, use our uh, intellectual ability to rationalize it, to find out the reasons and how to influence them, to formulate the strategies uh, to influence them um, and to control their own emotions and again to channelize rather to channelize their emotions in a very positive and constructive way. So, therefore, emotional intelligence is such a tool, it is a, it offers the useful skills, it acts like a toolbox, it is act like, it acts like a toolbox from which effective leaders actually they actively choose the styles and behaviors appropriate to the situation. So, emotional intelligence it offers a set of skills in that tool box, uh, toolbox. So, which uh, from which the effective leaders the you know very uh, intelligent leaders, influential leaders, transformation leaders all kinds of leaders they selectively very appropriately they selectively they um, choose uh, the styles different styles, the strategies, the techniques and use it appropriately as per the requirement of situation. Now, here I just want to say that uh, unlike intelligent uh, quotient, unlike intelligent quotient, intelligent quotient is also you know partly it is inherited and partly it is acquired. Um, so, um, but uh, we believe that there is a you know even though it is a lifelong process uh, intelligent quotient is you know we it is primarily um, develops usually the initially uh, initial formative years. But unlike e IQ, EQ or EI can be developed at any stage of our life, at any point of our lifespan we can develop EI. So, there is no age limit, there is no constraint like um, that is a um, 60 year old man cannot um, improve his EI or a um, 16 year old boy cannot uh, improve his over. EI can be learned, it EI can be developed throughout uh, our lifespan till the last stage of our you know till the last moment of the life also. So, EI is a continuous process is a lifelong process and anybody at any point of time can improve his EI through some rigorous through some exercise through some training through some you know individual attempt through some effort through some experiences. So, that is all about it and now we will just watch a video uh, video which can better explain um, about this uh, emotional intelligence and how we can develop it. Emotional intelligence is sometimes referred to as EQ or EI and was popularized by Dan Goleman in his 1995 book of the same name. Other key figures in this field of research include Beldock, Gardner, Salovey and Mayer. For the workplace, emotional intelligence is commonly defined as the ability to recognize and identify your own emotions and the emotions of others and to use this information to guide behavior. 
Clearly, it is one of the most important skills for a leader and manager to have. Disagreement exists amongst researchers with respect to both the terminology and specific models. In this course, we will take a practical approach by looking at specific scenarios and what tools we can use to get the best outcome. Rather than get bogged down on the theoretical foundations, we will focus on the behavioural aspects, what they are and how we can control or improve them. In the same way that IQ represents your intelligence quotient, EQ is used to represent your emotional quotient. We don't believe that having high emotional intelligence is more or less important than having a high IQ, but rather they are both important components of balanced leadership. You need to have the intelligence to understand the processes involved with management as well as having the skills to get others to perform effectively for you. No matter how intelligent you are, to get others to perform effectively, you need a high EQ. There are various tools to measure emotional intelligence, and these have been developed in line with the different models. Emotional intelligence tests are available from multiple sources on the internet. Researchers disagree over the validity and usefulness of some measurement systems, so use caution when reviewing results and what they mean. We are not focused on your actual number, rather, in what ways can we use and develop our EQ for better communication in the workplace. There is no such thing as a perfect emotionally intelligent being, rather it is a spectrum in which everyone can learn and improve. While some people are identified as being a born leader with charisma and magnetism, there are skills that everyone can learn. We will look at emotional intelligence from the two major perspectives, the self and others. Emotional intelligence in ourselves means that we can identify our emotions and respond to them. Our emotional intelligence in relation to others is the ability to be aware of other people's emotions and use this knowledge to guide our behaviour towards them. So now we can see that how uh, we can use EIE uh, competencies to maintain a healthy interpersonal relationship with all our stakeholders, uh, those who are as associated to us uh, directly or indirectly like uh, our students, our staff, our colleagues, um, you know our uh, community people, our people who are in our network. So, uh, so EI uh, not only helps us in relationship management, but at the same time we can utilize this. We can uh, use our EIs um, to motivate each and every professional, our staff, our colleague, our students for achieving their excellence, academic excellence, professional excellence, to nurture their talent, to maximize their potentials and to achieve their career goals. So, how ne the next thing is that how the leader, education leader is going to use this EI competencies not only to develop the EI competencies among his uh, stakeholders, among the students, among the staff, among the um, uh, colleagues, etc., but how to utilize this EI for achieving the larger goal, for fulfilling his vision and mission for the institution, for achieving the higher goal, career goal, academic goal, institutional goal for the larger benefit of the society. So, <coughs> Then as we have this already discussed, I mean that means uh, we will uh, discuss about it that leadership, leadership is a very compo a significant component and there are different styles, uh, patterns of leadership. Like it is again we can say it is individualistic in the nature, uh, uh, in the way that the every individual leader has some strengths, weaknesses, potentialities, personality traits, attributes, etcetera and how skillfully, how efficiently he uses these strengths, his positive attributes to uh, lead people, to guide people and to fulfill his uh, vision and mission uh, and to um, enhance the institutional effectiveness or increase the productivity. In, in educational context, <coughs> so primarily we will be uh, uh, acquainted with uh, this kind of you know this uh, six kind of leadership uh, styles uh, as per the Mackey and Held. So, there are uh, different styles uh, of educational leadership which features are like this and 
uh, it has some significant uh, impact whether positive or negative on the um, on the um, people on the uh, on, our, on its uh, stakeholders. Let us take uh, first thing is a coercive uh, kind of leadership, coercive kind of leadership it demands compliance. Like we can say with, uh, we can see it in the in case of the regular administrators or who are the you know task masters like who expects the people to comply with the requirements of the institutions and uh, fulfill all the um, responsibilities and the duties within the timeline etcetera. So, they demand compliance and they demand compliance by giving instruction clear instruction that do what I tell you like he always wants that everything should be you know uh, should be uh, complete everything should be perfect everything should be um, um, uh, completed within the stipulated time within the framework within the you know guidelines etcetera. So, hence he say he expects that the stakeholders to or the staff and the colleagues to comply with his uh, instruction. So, like uh, the message uh, he con conveys like do what I tell you that means he expects that all his all the uh, subordinates or the staff or the colleagues they are they are supposed to fulfill his wishes um, or carry out his instructions strictly uh, as per the guidelines to comply with the requirements of the institution. Hence, its impact is not very positive, its impact is negative because in this process carrying out or carrying out the, uh, the order strictly follow the instruction strictly it has that means people often resist because they often resist and they sometimes they also resent because they do not like this kind of approach of dictatorial approach of you know highly authoritative command of you know do as I said you know, this is my order this it, it shows a kind of highly structured you know um, bureaucratic kind of structure highly you know um, um, that means vertical structure kind of uh, organization. So, it does not have a positive impact. Next is authoritative, um, authoritative is also like you can say the leader claims to be you know authority and but he however, he mobilizes the people towards the vision. So, how does uh, he influence others by persuade others by making them familiar with the vision and mission of the institution. So, he motivates them mobilize them then towards the vision. So, they he motivates them towards uh, the vision and mission, mission of the institution by making them familiar with uh, narrating them again and again uh, conducting different kinds of meeting um, to you know to induce uh, induce them towards this goal achievement to, uh, to energize them. So, mobilize the people towards the vision by rigorous uh, practice uh, exposure uh, inform, formal and informal meetings etcetera to motivate them towards the achievement. And uh, his message actually says that come with me I am also moving ahead I am also going ahead and you come with uh, me and let us achieve our targets our goals our missions uh, uh, together uh, uh, together. Uh, so, it has a positive impact. Uh, even though the here is authoritative, but he can um, take his uh, task, he can uh, um, uh, make the task uh, done by others by motivating others, energizing others by uh, taking them together with him and uh, moving ahead in a positive direction. So, then comes the another category that is affiliated, affiliative um, kind of leadership style. Uh, so, uh, which uh, creates a more harmony and builds emotional bond. So, this affiliated kind of leaders are more uh, you know they are more dependent or they more believe in developing a kind of healthy emotional bond uh, relationship, he, they actually they emphasize more an interpersonal relationship, they uh, uh, give emphasis more to the group harmony, team harmony, uh, institutional harmony and that is the first thing and developing the emotional bond. Then and then he motivate them towards the work hence his message is that people come first that means, let us uh, build the relationship first. So, usually in collectivist society like you know in some of the Asian countries we give more importance to relationship than our academic success or the um, professional success. So, we spend enough time in building the relationship maintaining the group harmony building the group. So, for us group dynamics is more important and then only we move towards the uh, work. So, here people come first and it has again it has a positive significant impact on others on, on, on the employee on the staff to, uh, to be committed to the work. Then comes the democratic leadership, democratic style of leadership is that it forges the consensus through participation like it gives enough opportunity freedom a kind of environment. Uh, so, that uh, anybody uh, anybody and everybody can uh, you know can 
express their own ideas, views, own opinions, etc. Anybody can ventilate their anger, emotions, etc. So, but uh, at the end, whenever they are taking a uh, decision, it has to be a consensus. That means, even if you have the any kind of you know, if you do not agree, decide, if you have any disagreement, any comment, any remark, any you know, um, any kind of you know. Negative analysis, uh, all kinds of cynical interpretation. Then let us discuss it. Let us discuss it, debate on this, have a dialogue, have a conversation, and thoroughly discuss uh, this issue in a threadbare um, way. But at the end, the consensus has to be drawn. Un unless or until the consensus has been drawn, the decision cannot be taken. So it forces the whole uh, members, team members, the uh, participants, uh, to. Um, to draw to come to the conclusion through consensus through active participation dialogue conversation etc and it gives equal opportunity to everybody to express their thoughts views and ideas that is the what do you think that means if the message of the leader towards the um, team members like what do you think everybody has equal right and uh, opportunity opportunity should get to express his thoughts and at the end when the consensus is drawn then the decision uh, has been a decision is being taken and implemented. So, that ultimately it has also a positive impact on others. Then um, pace setting, some uh, you know some leaders are you know uh, task master, hard task master. So, they set the goals first, the target you know the target, the goal, um, the standard of performance has already been set by the leader and uh, the leader expects that everybody should follow it achieve it within the time uh, stipulated time so as do as i do now so the moment he begins others should also begin and the moment he expects that they should finish they should also finish so like in ki in, in case of the jobs like you know marketing uh, kind of insurance uh, all kinds of marketing jobs uh, so there is a stiff competition they are usually the staff the, the employees they used to get a target no within this month within that month they have to achieve this means this target um, uh, you know they have to um, uh, admit this, this, this many clients etc. So, the targets have already been set by the leader and with a um, high standard with high standard and the um, in very uh, speed performance high speed performance, but ultimately people get fed up people get you know exhausted with these targets because all the time it is not possible for everybody to um, to achieve the targets because you know so many situational factors so many environmental factors uh, are not uh, within our control or are not within the control within of the professionals because we cannot control the human behavior we cannot control the situational behaviors so, it is very difficult for them to achieve the uh, targets uh, so that is why it has a negative impact on the people uh, sometimes people are very in the initial stage they become very so overwhelmed with the target this and that very and um, become very enthusiastic but later on they get burnt out they get uh, exhausted so there is another kind of style, leadership style that is the coaching we have already discussed about the mentor mentors mentoring coaching so the coaching kind of leadership is that develops the people for the new future so that means the coach the mentors the nurtures the grooms the employees they are so they um, not only give individual attention to their strengths and weaknesses their needs their requirements they impart training to them to develop their skills competencies they give individual attention they appreciate them you know uh, they uh, from time to time uh, they conduct different kinds of informal meetings uh, to as uh, to know each and every individual employee what are their strengths weaknesses what are their needs what do they need at this moment you know what are their personal um, lives uh, uh, stories uh, do, are they happy with or not what are their con the constraints they are facing in life the setbacks they are facing in life their experience their life experiences so so they would try to understand each and individual employees uh, you know background uh, their strengths weaknesses their needs accordingly they provide uh, Tree, uh, trainings uh, again individually they uh, attain to them their requirements by empathizing them then by giving the by having the constant communication dialogue with them by appreciating their um, uh, behavior appreciating their strengths so without criticizing their um, you know their uh, poor performances etc how to encourage them by appreciating their um, potentials abilities so uh, ultimately they uh, emphasizes on how to enhance their self esteem self efficacy their commitment ultimately it brings commitment and citizenship behavior among the employees so this coaching kind of um, um, leadership style the mentoring uh, kind of leadership style uh, or you can say or ultimately we say it um, the transformational kind of leadership style it develops each and individual employee for and make him prepared for the future so develop the pupil for the future he doesn't only focus on the 
present or achieving the present goals or institutional goals, goals but he just visualizes, he just imagines for the future leaders after the uh, 20 years or down the line 30 years what would be the kind of institutional uh, we'll have and how the um, how our future generation um, leaders will behave will achieve and what would be the stage so he has a different kind of different level of you know self like self actualized goals higher levels of visions and missions and he prepared the existing staff each and every individual employee colleague you know, for that future so he every moment he encourages all his employees uh, and staff for uh, trying out the new approaches, innovative approaches. For that matter, he has he himself has to be, you know, very creative, very innovative, and uh, he himself has to be very collaborate and um, be a participant uh, within the team, within the team, uh, within the time. And it has immense, uh, it has immense positive impact, uh, impact on others' behaviors, on others' behavior. In this context, we can say that all these attributes are. Um, all these attributes are for you know, can say are for the transformational uh, leaders who bring who, tra who tries to bring the complete transformation of um, their institution, their um, educational uh, institution and organizations. By you can say they want to th uh, want to bring 360 degree positive transformation uh, for that organizations. So transformational leadership aims to bring about the change in individuals and the systems uh, creating positive changes in the followers, developing them into the future leaders. So, all this. So, transformational leaders, they do not just um, emphasize on one aspect like on productivity or the performance or the learning outcomes uh, or the competence of the teachers or the administrator, etcetera. They do not just emphasize on one component, but the total transformation of each and every aspect. Uh, of the uh, institution. Hence, they are very meticulous, they are very meticulous in giving indi giving individual attention to each and every uh, you know aspect of. So, often they do micromanagement as well as macro management as well as the micro management. So, they give specialized uh, attention to each and every aspect of <coughs> of the individual institutional activities. So, <coughs> often they conduct informal meetings, uh, informal meetings with the <coughs> with their staff just to uh, just to know about just to appraise himself uh, about what is going on what is what are the uh, problems uh, the problems they are facing they may not be very you know open about this uh, by by uh, openly saying uh, sharing their um, you know um, problems or the hurdles they are facing so very often he conducts uh, they conduct um, informal meetings just to know uh, more about their staff their colleague their students to get the feedback uh, from the grassroots level, then how to uh, in, how to blend this feedback in the action plan, how to make the action plan more robust kind of thing, how to you know encourage each individual, um, each individual uh, staff, student, uh, colleague, etc. So, uh, so in this context for uh, being a transformational leader also, we need also intelligence. We have to perfectly blend both the intelligence uh, question IQ that means your uh, domain knowledge, um, academic intelligence as well as your managerial intelligence or the emotional intelligence. So, here in this context of, um, for being the pro transformation leader, we need um, uh, four uh, types of intelligence uh, tra traits, uh, we important uh, types of intelligence uh, trait, uh, which are very much required for uh, being a transformation leader and um, bringing the total transformation to the institutional aspect in, in any of the institutional organizations. So, uh, we will uh, just uh, discuss elaborately in our uh, next uh, session, next class. So, thank you.